Hoi there makers, let's take a look at the Servo 2040. So the Servo 2040 is an 18 channel server controller board. If you're building a hex pod, you're building a robot arm, any kind of articulated contraption of your dreams then this all-in-one RP2040 powered servo controller with current measuring, sensor headers and RGB LEDs is perfect for this kind of thing. So the Servo 2040 is a standalone servo controller for making lots of things with moving parts. It's got pre-soldered header pins for plugging in up to 18 servos, which is pretty cool. Enough for the leggiest of hexapods, walkers, or plenty of degrees of freedom for your robotic arms, legs, or tentacles. Servos can be pretty power-hungry beasts, especially these larger ones like this. So we've added some really neat monitoring functions so you can keep an eye on the power consumption. So let's take a closer look at some of those LEDs. So there are six addressable RGB LEDs. We'll take a look at them in a second, AKA NeoPixels, for visual feedback and status reports, plus pins for headers to connect up to six analog sensors, which is useful for sensing where the ground is, or if you're about to crash into a wall or measure how much the, the claw is exerting on your hapless test subject. Who writes this? So we've also pooped. <laughs> I think that's supposed to say. We've also popped a Quest connector on there, so it's easy to connect the Quick and Stemmer QT breakouts too. Servo 2040 is supported by a well-documented C++ MicroPython servo library with lots of examples, and we'll go through a few of them in a minute, to show you how to use the individual features or everything all together. So let's take a look at some of the design notes. So we've used the RP2040 as our core of the board, uh, and we've used this because of the flexibility of the programmable IOs, or POs. So traditionally, each server needs to be connected to its own pulse width modulation capable channel on the microcontroller. Uh, and RP2040 only has 16 pulse width modulation channels, but it's possible to drive up to 30 servos using the magic of PIOs, if you're canny with the wiring that is. So RP2040 PIOs are super fast. They can drive servos with microsecond resolution. So we built the RP2040 microcontroller right into the Servo 2040. So you don't need a separate microcontroller and servo driver board as well. So traditionally you'd need something like this PCA9685 board, which can only drive 16 servos at a time, as well as a controller like a Raspberry Pi Pico or an Arduino. So this makes it really compact for perfect for small robots, which is what I absolutely love. So let's have a look at some more of the features. So the RP2040 is a dual core Cortex M0 Plus running at 133 megahertz with 264K of RAM. It has two megs of onboard flash, which means it's plenty of space to store our scripts and programs. And it has 18 header pins for connecting three pin hobby servos. It supports higher voltages as well. So if you want to drive up to 11 volts, you can do that with the board. It has six addressable RGB LED NeoPixels and six sets of header pins for connecting analog sensors as well. It also has this onboard voltage sensing so we can keep an eye on how much voltage our servos are pulling. And it has the reset and boot button and the boot button can be used as a user button as well, not a rest button as it says there. The USB-C connector for programming and power up to three amps maximum. And it also has screw terminals so you can provide some external power with reverse polarity protection up to 10 amps maximum. And it also has the Quest connectors, the quick stem QT connectors for breakouts. And it's fully assembled, so there's no soldering required. It works straight out of the box. Um, there's plenty of, of C++ and MicroPython libraries and examples, which is really, really good. We'll have a look at those any second. And there'll be a schematic and mechanical drawing available very soon too. So software, we talked about how the cool the software is. So because it's an RP2040 board, the Servo 2040 is firmware agnostic. So you can run your C, C++, MicroPython or CircuitPython code. All you need to do is just flash the firmware, which is very, very easy to do on these boards. So our C++ and MicroPython libraries will help you get the most out of your Servo 2040. They're packed full of features and they work with servos. Um, you'll get the best performance using C++, obviously, because that's compile code. But if you're a beginner, we recommend using the out of the uh, box batteries included MicroPython build uh, for ease of getting started. You can also use CircuitPython on your Servo 2040 if you want to get all the nice conveniences of the Adafruit ecosystem, but please note that you can only address up to 16 servos if you use CircuitPython. 
So some final notes as well. So dimension wise, it's 62 millimeters by 42 by 12 millimeters. So pretty small. There are mounting holes as well, which are M2.5 and 2.7 from each edge. And if you want to run the servo at a higher voltage than five volts, then there's a little cut separate USB and extension power trace on the back of the board. And you'll just need to cut that if you want to use it. Um, and that prevents the RP2040 being damaged by increased voltage. If you cut this trace, you will need to provide external power for the logic board through USB or through five volts on the broken out header. When programming on a battery, we would recommend that you use a data only USB cable, such as the power blower, uh, to avoid back powering the computer or the battery. So let's take a look at a demo, shall we? Okay, let's get to the overhead camera. So I've got on the board here um, this Civil 2040 and it's running the uh, one of the pieces of code that we'll look at shortly. So let's go over to uh, the captain's table here. Let me grab my Thonny. And I've got a number of programs that we can run through. So let's just turn off the LEDs first. So this very first program simply just turns off those LEDs. You can see now they've actually gone off. Now to run that one, um, there's an example in the examples folder that's called LED Rainbow. So if we run that one, if I turn the lights down on the overhead camera, you can see there you get this nice kind of rainbow effect on the six addressable RGB LEDs. Okay, let's go back to that. Um, next up, we will have a look at some of the servos. So for this one, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So on the desk, I have got two robots. It's actually one robot, but there's two <laughs> side by side. So this board is actually powering the servos on this Pico Cat over here. I've not quite wired up um, the bunny bot yet. Um, so at the moment, this is it looks a bit confusing, but this board is actually powering all the servos on this, this cat over here. So I'm going to run the single servo. So let's run that and let's just move this into shot so you can see what's going on. So this is simply just moving the servo from its minimum, maximum and mid position. And it'll just keep doing that at different speeds just to show you the control that it has. So it's simply just moving that servo from minimum, maximum, and then back to the midpoint, which is really easy to do. So if we just scroll to that section of code. You can see what's going on there. So it's sweeping. Uh, then there's one that does steps. So you'll see it do the steps in a second. It looks a lot more jagged as it does that. There's the stepped one. So it's just going to different angles and then it's going back. And the number of steps that we've defined there is 10 steps. There we go. So I can stop that. Another example is servo easing. So this is where you can ramp up the speed of the servo over time. So it can very slowly sweep and then speed up or slow down. So you get a nice sort of eased uh, action on the, the servo. So you can see that it's just gently moving around. And we can see on the shell output there all the different values that it's sweeping through. So you can see there it's going faster than slow, faster than slow. I particularly like that one. Okay, so we're gonna stop that one. Let's have a look at current metering. So I'm gonna run this one and what we'll get is loads of output. Let's just run that one. There we go. So it's measuring the current through the servos and it's telling us what the current currently is. You can see there it's about 0 0.06. So I can stop that program. And then finally, what I'm going to do, I'm going to run the PicoCat code. Now, this is some code I put together using the Servo 2040 library. Um, so it's a very simple program. Um, what it will do is it will make the, the robot look left, look right, nod. It will stand up, it will wag its tail, and then it will sit down. So I've made all these little actions for it to do that. Let me just scroll to the very bottom. You can see there. So it's going to set the name to uh, Pixel. It's going to nod. It's going to look left, look right, look ahead. It's going to stand up, wag its tail, and then sit down. So let me just move this so you can see what's going on. I'll run it twice so we can watch it. Let's press run. There we go. He's jumped up. <laughs> there we go. And then it's going to sit back down. And the sit back down uses the easing uh, code as well. So we can see it just gently does that. I'll hold it this time so that it doesn't quite jump up. So it's nodding. There we go. It stood up wagging its tail, I love that bit, and then it's going to sit down. There we go. Love that. So if you want to see a, a deeper video, I actually did one on the Pico Cat using the Servo 2040, and it's a bit more of a deeper dive, I think it's about half an hour long. You can catch that one on my YouTube channel, which is uh, YouTube slash Kevin 28
So I hope you enjoyed this short video on how to use the Servo 2040. I can't wait for this to be launched. This is my favourite board that Pimaroni have actually made. Can't wait to see what other people do with this as well. So thanks for watching. I shall see you next time. Bye for now.